gotten some questions from friends about how to do the loopy bind off at the top of the um, Mrs. Smith's thread case pattern that I just downloaded or uploaded to um, Ravelry. And so I have one here that's sort of in a partially finished state. Um, I have done the bottom part, the cast on, the lace pattern with a little flower design, and then I've got my eyelet rows and everything and I'm all set to go. So I'm back at the beginning of my round, which is right here. Um, I'm using I think size 10, 9 or 10 double points and uh, worst weight yarn and the um, hook that I have is a size H. So I'm not a crocheter so t I tend to just grab what's handy. Um, so in order to do this loopy bind off, we're basically just going to be knitting a chain, a chain stitch, which is about crocheting a chain stitch, which is about all I can do actually. Um, so we start by crocheting the first two loops together and I know that there's probably a better way to do this, but since I'm primarily a knitter, I usually go in knitwise, pull a loop around, and then I pull it through those two stitches that kind of binds it off. Now I'm going to chain and uh, again I'm really not a very natural crocheter as I'm sure you can see here, um, but I'm going to chain the appropriate amount. But I've chained my five and now I'm going to loop into the next two stitches on that needle. I'm going to pull the yarn through those two working stitches, pop them off the end of the needle and then I'm going to pull it through my chain stitch. That makes my first little loopy bind off. And actually, looking at that, I'm wondering if I might want to chain more than five. I'll, I'll stick with five. Um, you can, of course, change the number of stitches that you have in each of these loopy bind offs. Four, five. Um, you can choose to put beads on them. If you put a bead on the third stitch in each chain, um, then you'll have a little bead at the top of each each loop. Now you can start to see how this is going to look in its finished form. Oh, I guess I like the five. Five is a nice amount. Alright, so you can now see that I'm within the last two stitches of what needs to be bound off and my top edge here is looking awfully curly. Uh, don't worry about that. Most of it will come out in the blocking. Um, so what I'm going to do is just add my little crochet chain here. I need five stitches and again my crochet technique is certainly far from desirable, so um, I'm sure there's a better way to do it. It's just not something I'm very good at. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I'm gonna bind off my last two stitches. And here is where you have a decision to make, and this is up to individual preference. You will see that there's like kind of this little odd section right here where there is not a crochet chain loop. Oh, let me move my yarn. I can get a better view of it. There you go. So everything else has a little loop joining it except this last little section. So sometimes, and this is depending on um, the, the fabric and the way it's looking, sometimes with the fingering weight or sock weight ones, I'll just bind it off here and leave it. Um, but I'm gonna add an extra little five stitches of chain here. Four, five, and this is not in the first version of the direction, so I'll probably be adding that. Then I'm going to go in and just crochet it to the first stitch that I had. And that completes my chain and makes sure that I have a little loop kind of leading back into it. So I think it makes it look a little bit more finished. And now of course the last thing I need to do is cut my yarn and pull my end through. Um, I'm one for generous tails, so I'm just going to use a big length of yarn here. Um, and then you're just going to pull it and pull it all the way through that loop. There you go. I leave a long tail because sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I've made mistakes and I'd like to tighten something up and I want that extra length um, in order to be able to do that. So you can see that the top little crochet chain here is making a nice little scallop. Um, and it's a good idea to uh, 
uh, block this out and actually the directions in the pattern do say to block aggressively <laughs> so what I mean by that is that uh, when you are ready to block it and you've woven in all your ends get it completely wet pin out the entire thing um, so that it's the correct shape of course and then what I tend to do is at the top I'll stick my pin into each of these and I'll just pull it really tight so that I get a really nice tight um, pull tension, lots of tension on that loop, really not, helps to stretch it out and pull it nicely. And I end up, um, sometimes the top fans out a little bit, just like this, um, and that's okay too because when we are actually finishing it as a bag, we put the drawstring in here, it pulls up nicely and that gives it that little flowery appearance at the top. Um, and wool, again, does always hold its shape, as you know, so it's a really nice medium to work with. So I hope that this video tutorial was helpful in this loopy crochet bind off. Uh, this bind off is also used in another pattern in the Chatton Cottage collection, and um, that will be released soon. So hopefully uh, it'll be a useful tool for more than one project. Well, I decided to leave it unblocked because I like this sort of ruffly curly edge at the top. Um, and I know from having blocked some of my other one projects that um, that would kind of pull those out a little bit tighter. Uh, so here's the finished item with its little drawstring. Um, and I went ahead and used a pink ribbon because I used pink um, cut glass kind of crystal beads down here for the flower. And you'll notice that I only did one repeat of the chart. Um, with the worsted weight yarn and the bigger needles, it gets really tall and skinny if you do multiple repeats. Um, so this one is finished up, and then I also wanted to just show you this little thread case that I did with sock yarn in size 3 needles. Um, and I did two sets of repeats of the chart, so there's two little flowers. And the other thing that um, is a little bit different is at the top I added some little beads to the edge of the um, drawstring ribbon that went through. And then this is shown on the project page, um, but on the inside, of course, is the little, the little thread case that has the, the folio. Um, the pattern for this is in the, the download as well, um, but you can see that there's just a little place to keep all of your sewing items safe. Um, this one I did black aggressively, um, so you will see that all of the little eyelets have kind of sharp points. Um, and I also blocked the sides out so that you could really see the lace. Um, and it just kind of pulled it out a little differently. So there's two examples of the Mrs. Smith's thread case. The smaller size, um, which just for comparison, is about the same size as a cell phone. Uh, and then the larger size, which of course for an evening would hold your cell phone, 